You know, for most of us, Reverend Amon doesn't need an introduction because most of us have heard and has received the inspiration that has helped us in some way. So I won't read his bio, but what I will do is what I'll say is things that I know about him. So what I do know is, is that Reverend Amon believes in healing. Reverend Amon believes in listening to God through himself. Reverend Amon will then speak what he's heard from the inspiration. Reverend Amon has not studied or went to a Bible class, but yet he has cracked the code on some of these mysteries that most of us could not figure out. So what I would say is listen close and take notes because something will be revealed that will help you through whatever it is you may face. My brother, the cold cracker, Reverend Amon. preacher preach about the coming Christ preaching this is not a preaching ministry this is a teaching ministry we are not preachers we are teachers and we're teaching what Jesus taught thousands of years before Jesus arrived People were talking about the coming Christ. Jesus showed up and said, I am the Christ. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about today. The Christ in you. We have some pass outs. We're going to make sure that you have an outline here. The following, because as I said, this is a teaching. And the goal here is for you to leave here with a higher understanding of what the Christ is. And in proportion to your awareness of the conscious presence of the Christ in you, it is to that degree that you will be able to emulate Jesus and do what Jesus taught us to do. We believe that Jesus never healed anybody because he saw nothing to heal. It would be an oxymoron. It wouldn't make sense if he didn't believe in sickness and disease and problems. And how can you heal what you don't believe in? Doesn't that make sense? So there will be various speakers this month speaking on this topic, mental equivalent. So I'm going to leave all the good stuff for them. And I'm going to go in a different direction than anybody else go. That's what you have in your outline. And we're going to talk about what Paul described, St. Paul in the book of Acts, called the mystery hid from the ages. The Christ in you, the hope of glory. One of my favorite teachers who wrote, yeah, I guess in the 40s and 50s, 19, 1840s and 50s, worldwide teacher, author of many books, translated in many languages, 
Neville Goddard, A.K. Mosendar, just a list of them. He teaches and they teach that Christ in you is your imagination. Christ in you is your imagination. Jesus, in your outline, it says, revealed the nature of the divine being by. Well, how did he, Jesus reveal the nature of your divine being, his divine being? And here it is. By the embodiment, that word embodiment is a heavy word here, y'all. By his embodiment of the divine nature. You are being reminded here that you have work to do. Our teaching, this thing called science of mind, used to be called religious science, now called the church of spiritual living. Uh, it's new thought, you might call it metaphysics, that's all right. But it is, we say that this is not a lazy person's religion. You don't just come here and sit and listen and walk away and something's going to happen for you and ah, we're going to pray for you. Ah. You do this, you do this yourself. This is not a lazy person's teaching. You hear something, then you go on and go, go deeper. Get that book and read it. You know, study and meditate and grow. When I first came into this teaching in late beginning of the 1980s, well, late 1970s, 78, 79, 80, 81, I just got drunk. I said, my God. See, I already knew about it before I discovered it. It was calling me. And when I walked into it, I said, oh, my God, this makes sense. This is thinking. You know, this makes sense. And it says it ain't working until you work it. It ain't working until you work it. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus put it this way. As ye believe, it shall be done unto you. The whole teaching of Jesus was based on the theory, your outline says, that we are surrounded by an intelligent law which does unto each as he believes. Jesus came into the world at a, at a time when people went to the priest to pray. The priest to heal and the priests to do this and confess their sins and so forth and so on. Jesus saw something wrong with that. He realized that the people were victims of their religious beliefs. Your outline says we must not only believe, we must know. We must not only believe, we must know that our belief measures the extent and degree of our blessing. It is done unto you as you believe. People don't realize that that's a law right there. That's a science right there. You can write volumes of books just on that one statement, that one law, that one principle. It is done unto you. It's an equation. It's science. It's scientific. It is done unto you as. Well, it's the as, excuse me, that gets us in trouble. means you. God ain't doing nothing until you do. And God cannot violate your will. He gives you free will and then going to take it back. Uh -uh. As you believe. If our belief is limited, God can't do nothing. If our belief is limited, only a little can come to us because that is as we believe. Now, this is what we call the law of mental equivalent. I just gave it to you. Our subject for the whole month is the law of mental equivalent. Other speakers on the next three months will give, come to it at different angles. But I just told you what it is. Now that I've told you what it is, look at your outline. Matthew 16, 19. Jesus says, God speaking through Jesus I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There's the as right there again. This is the law of mental equivalent. Whatever you bind on earth, I can't do nothing with it. But when you loose it, 
on earth and I'll loose it in heaven. Everything but the hour is the law will loose it in heaven. Everything in life has a spiritual significance means no matter what you are experiencing in life, whether you deem it good or bad, negative or positive, and whatever it is that you're not experiencing in life that you want to experience has a spiritual significance. It has a spiritual importance. It has a purpose. It has a purpose. But it has no meaning until you give it a meaning. It has a purpose. Purpose is of God. Meaning is of man. Nothing happens in my life. And get rid of this, yours, so some of y'all looking at me funny. Nothing happens in my life. And nothing comes into my life and your cousin's life, not you. <laughs> me and your cousins. Nothing happens in our lives without purpose. Because I created it. I drew it to me. I manifested it. I have to own it. I have to accept it. And until I accept it, I'm going to repeat it over and over and over. God makes it purposeful. So no matter what it is that you're experiencing, that you're trying to get rid of, that you're trying to heal, that you're trying to relieve, that you're trying to release, we need to stop trying to get rid of it. Stop trying to heal it. Stop trying to stop worrying about it. Let it go. It cannot be healed. Accept it. But what you are accepting is not the problem. What you're accepting is its purpose. Ask God, what is it for? And when, you, when it is revealed to you what it is for, that's your answer. And that's where the healing is. That's where the healing is. Okay? Does anybody else need a pass out? Can you raise your hand so people will know where you are? Okay, I'll get some. There's some on my desk. There's more here. We have more. There's enough for everybody. We have enough for everybody. So did you catch that? That's a very important point. We're not leaving this until everybody get it. This is the crux of the whole message. Things that you're praying for to be rid of. Things that you're trying to, you're asking for God for answered prayer. Your prayer is what's holding it in place. The prayer is what's giving it life. Okay? There's four, there, there's a, six pages to it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's supposed to be folded. It's not, it's not supposed to be unfolded when you get it. If when it's folded as a group, so they shouldn't be separated. Now, I need your attention. Shh, I need to continue. You're, you're, you're distracting me here. Right? It's my fault I should have passed them out earlier. Okay, let's be still. That last point is critical. Whatever I am experiencing, and your cousin is experiencing his, his or her life, he created it. She created it. That's a good thing. And we're praying to get rid of it. We're praying to heal it. We're praying to change it. When it's your blessing, what you want to know is that what is it for? What is his purpose? And ask God, what does it mean? And God will give you the meaning to it, and in that is the healing. I've been through this so many times in healing stuff in my life. I know. Okay. Mosendar, who wrote in 1930, it is the meaning which we give to a word which gives it power. It is the meaning which we give to whatever you name in your life which gives it power. It doesn't matter what the name of the disease, the name of the problem, the name of the trouble, the name of whatever. It ain't nothing till I name it, till I call it. 
back of all sacred words are sacred meanings given by the originators of these words. Even the words we speak in ordinary conversation cannot have any power unless we give specific meaning to them. Now, I said, visited that little quote to help you to understand how you're going to understand what mental equivalents mean. I'm not telling you what it is. You can read the book and it tells you what it is. You can go to the dictionary and find out what it is. You can Google it and find out what it is. I'm the teacher. I'm going to tell you what it means. The meaning God gives me to what it is. Now, you will have a revelation that explains and tells you what it is. In the thunder of silence, Joel Goldsmith says these words. It is not possible to get free from anything. Not possible. There are thousands of people trying to free themselves from stuff and mess, thinking that when that particular freedom is gained, their life is going to be a better one. Sometimes it is temporarily, but even if it is, it is only a human solution. Not permanent, not real, because no one ever gets free from. That's funny, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> she is so simple. Right. Yeah. So silly. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. The problem with this kind of teaching is the complexity is in its simplicity. Yes. It's simple. How can that be? To become free from one thing is to become attached to another thing. That which saves you, claims you. The only complete freedom is a freedom in Christ. The longer we are on this path, page four, the easier it will be for us to understand that it is not possible for anyone to embrace truth except in proportion to his readiness for it. It is time for you to put on your seatbelt. Let me hear everybody say click. Because what's following here is going to make some people move a little bit in their seats. Let me reread that. The longer we are on this path, the easier it will be for us to understand that it is not possible for anyone to embrace truth except in proportion to his readiness for it. So here we go. Sometimes that readiness comes only because of the futility and frustration that have gone before. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. I don't want to hurt no more. I don't want to cry no more. I'm tired. I'm worried. I'm, going to, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to change. You see, some people are not ready for change. Some people are addicted to pain. Some people are addicted to poverty. Some people are addicted to, addicted to, you think, I'm talking about your cousins. Now you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. Every sin, every disease, and every lack that have ever touched our lives have been what? Say that next two words. Have been what? Necessary. A necessary part. See, you can stand in the way of other people's karma. You can stand in the, in the in, 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 you know what I just said, don't you? Yes. Uh-huh. Living other people's lives and rescuing and, and, and getting in there. They got to go through some stuff. And you're standing in the way and get caught up in it. Every sin, every disease, every lack that has ever touched our lives have been a necessary part of our entire experience, without which we would not have been made ready or prepared to receive the blessing that is waiting to take its place. Yeah. But it can't take its place because you ain't ready. He says, I say this knowing that some of us have been down into the very depths where sin, disease, lack, and the, and, and the great. Well, mm -hmm. Yet whatever the degree of the severity of the problem each one has had, 
It's perhaps the degree that each one has needed. Whatever you, whatever you just come out of, you needed it. Whatever you're going through, you needed it. And whatever you're going to go through, you need it. You created it. It's in, your, it's in the tra tra trajectory of your experience on the way to your divine destiny. Yes. It, whatever you're going through prepares you for the blessing that is waiting through the next door. Yes. Woo! Some cannot go up to the heights of spiritual vision until they have gone all the way down physically, mentally, morally, or financially. Get out of their way. And just because somebody ain't rescuing you the way you want them to rescue you, that's a blessing. Why are you mad at them? You, you, you're glad that they didn't help you. You're glad that they, you're glad that you're glad you're glad you weren't there. You're glad they weren't there. Well, you, you, you let me down. You're glad they let you down. You, 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 that was a blessing. Some have had to go halfway down, and some probably much less than that. But whatever depths you and I have known, that was the experience necessary for us to reach the heights. Lord, don't move. Should I say it again? Lord, don't move that mountain. Don't, and, and you know what? It, it, it don't even say that. I misquoted. You know what it says? <laughs> Lord, don't move my mountain. Don't move my mountain. Give me the strength and the serenity of prayer. God, help me to what? Accept the courage, the wisdom. Come on. Some of you may yet have to be pushed and prodded very hard and involved in a great many serious problems to come before you will be able to embrace these principles. One thing alone will demonstrate this teaching. Realizing that what the principles are and then taking them in heart, mind, soul, and body, living with them and through them until they become demonstrable principles within you. This is your mental equivalent. Your mental equivalent is a state of mind. It's a state of being. It's a state of knowingness. The state of knowing your relationship with God. Jesus' relationship with God was I and the Father are one. Mm -hmm. He that seeth me sees the Father. Yeah. You see, he, he, he knew his conscious union with God at all times and that nothing was happening in his life that God didn't already know about and had already handled it before it came to him. God don't let nothing come into your life until you, he has prepared you to handle it. That's a loving God. I got your back. Come on, show up so I can show out. Mm -hmm. That's where it said, then you become the light of the world. That's what that means. Then you become the light of the world. Let's go into the next page. Six, this grace of which most people are unaware operates only when faith in anything and everything has been relinquished. Faith in anything but God, let it go. Now, this next sentence here, watch this. This is where you get mad at me. <laughs> walk out. Don't everybody get walk out. Protest. <laughs> Go get a sign and come back. <laughs> watch this. Even in anything, and let me start from the top. This grace of which most people are unaware operates only when faith in anything and everything has been relinquished even including faith in a God from whom the world has been expecting miracles, whom the world has been waiting since the beginning of time. That God is already here. That Christ is already here. And that's what God Jesus crucified, this statement. 
The Christ existed long before Jesus as a potential spiritual force, an agent for God as the Holy Spirit waiting to be embodied and used by any man and all mankind in all ages up until Jesus came, it was not done. The high priest Melchizedek, way back ancient, ancient of times before Jesus, is mentioned in Genesis, Psalms, and Hebrews. He embraced these principles and embodied them to the point of manifesting the Christ in a manner greater than any individual before him, but not to the degree that Jesus did later on. The Bibles of other world religions show that great avatars tried to do this that Jesus did, but they too fail. Here comes Jesus, studied the law and the prophets, page seven, and understood the Christ not to be what they were looking for, but a principle, and set out to demonstrate or prove the Christ principle in man. He said, I come not to destroy the law and the prophets of what y'all have been talking about. I come to demonstrate it. I come to fulfill it. I come to show up as it. You don't know what you're reading here. Socrates preceded Jesus by 500 years. Socrates believed the Christ principle just as Jesus believed. They were on to something. Socrates was arrested. Who else was arrested later on? Jesus. Socrates was tried. Who else was later tried? 500 later is Jesus. Socrates was executed. Who else was executed for this? Jesus. And today, people in your house where you came from, Got you on trial. <laughs> I am the Christ. I am God. Mm -hmm. You are the occult. And all this crazy stuff. But this is what those before Socrates were martyred for. Those Jesus and those after him. And you today. A cult. You ain't got nothing to do with no cult. It's common sense. <laughs> and so they told Socrates, stop this philosophy, stop this teaching. And they arrested him. But he could have been set free. They offered him his freedom. If you go and stop preaching this stuff about the Christ and so forth and so on, he said, no. But if you stay here, you got to drink this hemlock, which was poison, the way of execution of the day. So he drank the poison. But he didn't have the full understanding of this message of the Christ. He drank it, but he couldn't resurrect as he thought he was going to be able to do. But you see the difference between Jesus and Socrates is that Jesus wasn't talking about resurrecting the physical body. He was talking about our show of resurrected as in the spiritual body. In the spiritual body. And in the spiritual body, he knew he had the power to manifest it in the form of that form that he was before. And some thought he was that, but he wasn't that. That was his spiritual body, you see. Psalms 82, 6 on the page 8. I have said, now this is the Old Testament before Jesus that Jesus studied. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. That's what got him in trouble professing what the prophets had taught him. I and the Father are one. He that seeth me sees the Father. Matthew 26, down below here, verses 57 through 68. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin, that's the Supreme Court, were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any. Finally, two came forward and declared, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. The temple of God. The temple of God was himself. The temple of God was you. 
The temple of God was mankind, but that's what got him killed. God in you. You are the temple of God. They, and so they thought he was talking about some governmental idea. <laughs> then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said unto him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are this Messiah, this Christ, the son of God. You said it, Jesus said. But I say unto all of you, did I underline from now on? Y'all see that? From now on. He said, from now on, I'm bringing you into a new consciousness. I'm revealing a new, I'm manifesting, I'm demonstrating a new consciousness. From now on, you will see, this is an idiom, Aramaic e idiom that you're reading here right now. A message in this. But I say unto all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One coming on the clouds of heaven. Which simply means through your right understanding. Yes. Yes. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need to hear any more of this mess? What do you think? And they took him and executed him on the cross for declaring that he was the Messiah. That he was the Christ. He wasn't saying that I, the man, Jesus, am the Christ. I, the man, Jesus, am. He says, I am the embodiment. I told you to watch out for that word, didn't I? I am the embodiment. I embrace the truth. I, I believe it and I'm practicing it. I'm doing it. I'm showing up as God. I ain't waiting for God to do nothing. I'm letting God do his thing through me. I am the embodiment. And so we teach you how to become the embodiment of the Christ. But you got to do something. You got to study and learn and meditate. And then you have to shut up. The number one key that you have to do is shut up. He says, page 10, I am the Christ. The son of the living God. I have come to illustrate by example. We don't teach Jesus as the great exception. We teach Jesus as the great example. And we don't make it up. It's right here. He said in his own words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the example. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Well, all over the world today, preachers are preaching. No man cometh unto the Father by, by me, as if they're talking about but by Jesus. That simply means, but by my nature. In my manner. In my nature. By my example. Showing up as God fearlessly. Page 11. Shut up. <laughs> uh huh. Jesus, page 11 in the middle. Jesus was the first and only man who surrendered his human nature to his divine nature and became the full living embodiment of God in a manner that no other person in history has done. So he deserved to be honored and recognized and celebrated and taught. But he says, teach not that I died in vain. Rather teach that I did not die by demonstrating that I live in you. And the way you do that is shut up. <laughs> None of these things move me. And don't name it till God tells you what it's for. I don't know what anything is for. You pick up the telephone. Hello, did you know? <laughs> did you hear about it? I'm going to tell you this. What you think about it? I don't think nothing. I don't know nothing, don't think nothing, and don't need to know nothing. 
I'm usually the last person to know about anything because people know that I don't need to know. And what am I going to do when I know? I don't really care. I ain't writing no check. I ain't coming. I ain't going. And I ain't calling you if I need something. I don't want you to know about it when I'm going through something. Because once you get it in your mind, I done got it out of my mind. Every time I see you, you asking about it. <laughs> I done healed it, let it go. I ain't mad no more. I ain't, here you are. What about what about what? What do you mean? What about what? What? Key number one to healing is shut up. <laughs> Verse 14, 12, John. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Yeah. And then our close is this, I think, coming to it. Of course, the miracle says this. Of course, the miracles is a book that's authored by Jesus, transmitted through Helen Killer. See, the spirit of Jesus is not dead. Now, this sounds weird to some people, but it's done unto you as you believe. Excuse me. Uh, this is the invitation to the Holy Spirit. Jesus saying to us today, I have said already that I can reach up and bring the Holy Spirit down to you but I can bring him to you only at your own invitation. I don't bombard into your life. I have to be invited. If you want to rule your life and govern your life, go ahead. But now if you want the co-pilot to come in and take over, invite me in. Lord, I need help. Lord, tell me what this is for. Give me the meaning of this. Then it will be revealed. But you want to call somebody and talk to them for them to tell you because they got a license or a reverend or a degree or something. Uh-uh. You can't tell me nothing. The Holy Spirit is in your right mind, Jesus said, as he was in mine. The Bible says, may the mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus and uses this as a blessing. It is the blessing of miracle mindedness. It asks that you may think as I thought, joining with me in Christ thinking. The Holy Spirit is the only part of the Holy Trinity that has a symbolic function. He is referred to as the healer, the comforter, and the guide. He is also described as something separate apart from the Father and from the Son. That ends the quote from A Course in Miracles. And then I close with these verses. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto you. It is done unto you as you believe is, a, is the law of mental equivalent. Your mental equivalence is your radiance. It's your aura. It's your consciousness. It's your mind, your thinking. It is emanating from you. It is broadcasting. It is magnetic. It draws. It, 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 ooh. It's just some awesome, awesome, awesome power. It's your consciousness, your conscious awareness of the Christ living in you and moving in you and, and, and guide, guarding and, and, and directing your life and just uh, the, whatever that is. But there's a divine orchestration going on in the heavens of your mind. And, 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 and stuff is being set up for you to just walk into and protecting you from. That's your mental equivalency is your consciousness. It's your Christ consciousness. You're radiating and emanating and drawing. You have a magnetic power field around you at all times. No harm. 10,000 may fall, but none shall come nigh me. I am. This is my mental equivalent, and so it is.
Yeah. And so it is.